Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here at Microsoft's October event announcing both software and hardware for Windows, and I wanted to chat about it with Devendra here from Engadget. Hey. How you doing, Devendra? I'm doing good, and I'm super pumped to be here. It's uh, been a really tiring day. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, ended up, I think, being a lot more announced than we originally uh, anticipated, but let's go run through mm -hmm. it. The first thing we want to talk about yep. is the Windows announcement. So they announced the next update for Windows. Yeah, Creator's Update, which is a strange name, but okay, very explanatory, right? Right, unlike Apple and going with names that are California-based, right. the first Windows one big update was Anniversary Edition. Yeah. Now you have Creator Edition, and they touted three uh, types of features. Uh, which I think one of them only excites me. Uh -huh. I wonder which ones you're excited about. Uh, so remind me of the future. So I know Maker Focus 3D Paints. Yes, that's kind of the big one. That's I think that's cool. the big one. So yeah, they wanted this whole emphasis on 3D creation and to mm -hmm. support that. They have a Paint 3D tool. Uh, it's a revamp of the original MS Paint. Yeah. now supports 3D editing. Uh, and tied to a library of objects you can bring in, yeah. and they've partnered with other libraries, and also Minecraft, so people building things in Minecraft and export. And you can 3D print right from it, too. And you can 3D print Super cool. right from it. Yeah. Uh, the big part of this announcement is they're also partnering with hardware makers to do VR goggles. Right. And they're not making goggles themselves. Mm -hmm. These are going to be goggles tied to a PC, connected, like, tethered, yeah but not with a smartphone in it, but right. with tracking built in, inside out tracking is what they said. It looks said. like really, I mean, so where it's coming from Dell, HP, Lenovo, and a couple other companies, it looks very small, so it actually looks like something that could be a Gear VR, but yeah, you have a small wire going into PC. It will be tethered yeah. to maybe a laptop or a desktop. Yeah. The thing to test really is how well that positional right. tracking is gonna work. They did say six degrees of freedom. Right. The demo they had on stage, the guy wearing it wasn't moving a lot, it was just yeah. turning. It actually looked untethered to me, like that's how seamless it was, so yeah, surprising. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a big announcement. The other things they announced with the Windows 10 Creator Update, uh, live streaming for video games. Sure, better like built-in broadcasting through Beam. I'm too much of an old person, I guess, to really be into broadcasting, but it's cool, good for the people who really need that. And also for people who are broadcasting using Twitch or right. Ustream already, Beam may not be a platform that they want to use. They are right. maybe, maybe happy with those. Right. The third thing is connectivity. On the bottom of the taskbar, you have icons representing your contacts, like your, your family members, contacts, yeah. and you can drag files or message them directly yeah. with that. I think yeah. that's interesting too. It's interesting. I was a little down on that at first, but uh, you know, you do really only interact with like four or five people throughout the day mostly, and having a quick way to access things and share things with them could be really interesting, yeah, going I think forward. it's their messaging play. Yeah. They want this to be their version of iMessage. Right. They already have Skype, so they and they're competitor for Dropbox also. Right. So having that built into the functionality of Windows, I think is going to be convenient. Mm -hmm. So that's Windows, now yes. on the hardware side. Mm -hmm. uh, a surprise, an update to Surface Book. Yes, I mean, uh, what, faster processors, uh, revamped GPU, revamped cooling, and a better battery life too, 30% better battery life. They're saying up to 16 hours. I don't know if I really believe that, because uh, they said they claimed, what, 10 hours with the original Surface, and we never quite got that either, so. Maybe it's a fraction, a good fraction of 16 hours, yeah. And the way they're doing that is just throwing more battery right. into the device. It's a little thicker, and right. to be clear, this isn't across the entire Surface Book line. It's just the Core i7 high-end right. version, the one with the discrete graphics. The graphics is bumped up, but it's still a maximal part, and it's a mobile right. part. It's it's uh, the GeForce 965 Not even M. the 10 series, which is the new stuff, yeah. Exactly, so if they're gonna put in more fans and make the physical keyboard bigger, packing more battery. I'm curious why they just didn't just put Pascal in there. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like, I mean, just from discussions we've heard uh, in terms of how they've designed their other new product, I feel like they are they just didn't have the new hardware in time you know, yeah. to really do all that. No updates with the Surface Pro line, which I know you so like. So weird. I love the Surface Pro 4. Um, still the same price, still the same hardware. Uh, I'm going to definitely ask Microsoft why they're not throwing in that keyboard yet, because it's $130, it should, be, it should be there, it should be part of the Surface Pro. Now as rumored, the big product announcement here was the Surface Studio. It's yeah. an all-in-one that I don't think really competes with the iMac. I, yeah, you look at it first, it's a 28-inch screen, it looks sort of like the iMac, but yeah, instead of having the hardware behind the monitor, it's all at the bottom. So it's more of a mini PC with a giant screen on top of it. But the, yeah, the really killer feature is that you could tilt it down to, what, 20 degrees, use it sort of like a drafting table, and that seems pretty cool. Like that, We haven't seen that before. 
And it sort of unifies the Surface idea Microsoft has been pitching for a while, right? Uh, with the original, you remember the big old uh, giant Surface desk thing? They have the Surface Hub still. And now they're bringing that down to, it's $3,000, but more affordable than the Surface Hub, you know? Which is much more expensive than like an iMac. But right. you're thinking about people who might have Wacom Cintiqs, for example. Yep. They're already paying $2,500, $3,000 for display that can run Windows that you can draw on. Yeah. Microsoft is u still using their N-Train technology they bought, which mm -hmm. I thought worked great on the Surface Book, yeah. but since then, the iPad Pro has come out, and I don't know about you, but I yeah. think the iPad Pro's pen is actually a little more responsive really? uh, than the Surface Book. I haven't spent enough time with it, but I really like the Surface Book's pen. But yeah, I'm not sure how artists would really adapt it. I'm not much of an artist myself. Yeah. And they haven't addressed artists' concerns, such uh -huh. as uh, angular pressure sensitivity, or orientation. Um, they uh -huh. say it's a really tight optical bond, okay. so you're not going to get much of a parallax effect needed on this. And it is a big display. Like, uh -huh. I think most of the cost of this Surface Studio is in the display, yeah. 28 inches. The resolution, I found out, is like 4,500 yeah. by 3,000. Now, yep. the reason they chose that is interesting is because it's a 192 DPI. Uh -huh. And what I was told, I think, is that 192 DPI makes a lot of sense because it's twice 96 DPI, which is what Windows is okay. developed at. Okay. Which means when you scale up Windows at 200%, integer uh -huh. scaling on the display, then you have one inch on the display looking like one inch on a sheet of paper. Yeah, and that's so another kind of, selling point for them. Yeah. Exactly. Like You can put up a sheet of paper on this, and it'll be perfect one-to-one -one size. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is, it's pretty big. Uh, the screen looks great. The mm -hmm. viewing angles look really good in this. Yeah, there's color. a lot of glare in our footage probably because of uh, because of the lighting and the way these rooms are, but you look at it up close, like the color range is insane. Yeah. Like I, they're basically going for what, sort of like HDR stuff, like what uh, was it, uh, P3 that mm -hmm. they're at now? Yeah, yeah, so it's 350 nits. It doesn't yeah. do the full 1,000 nits right. that you need for full HDR, okay. but they're saying the dynamic range on this is going to be great. Yeah. I didn't notice any backlight bleed. Yeah. The viewing angles, both horizontally and yeah. vertically, look good. It looks like OLED, but without the oversaturation, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. and like you said it's basically a mini PC yeah. with this really nice touchscreen, pen-activated right. display, and the hinge is the thing that makes this yeah. a complete package. And they actually have to wire all the you know connectivity from the display through the hinge, too. And I was talking with some Microsoft folks, just the way they designed that hinge is insane. Like they must have a crazy hinge team, like between the Surface Pro 4, the Surface Book, and this thing. I, yeah, I've tested so many convertibles, and most of the time, I know I'll hate one if the hinge and if the like mechanic is not good. Yeah, right. so it felt really sturdy. There are yeah. two points of the hinge, mm -hmm. and they don't work independently. Right, they work together, so you can't mm -hmm. just like flip it and one axis, it slides down. Right. But it does work, I tried it, and it does work at intermediate um, degrees of uh -huh. tilt. Uh, it pretty stays well. pretty sturdy, too, like in between, yeah. yeah it's something I can't wait to test. Uh, you said $3,000, I'll oh have God. a full desktop processor. Yeah. It's so strange, a 980M on this. Yeah, it sounds well. like they didn't have enough lead time to bring in the 7th gen Intel stuff, yeah. and not enough time, or to bring in the 10, the 10 series NVIDIA or the 7th gen Intel processor, so. And it really seemed like they wanted yeah. to lower the TDP on this right. so they could put the power brick inside that mini right. PC. There is right. no external power brick. Right. That screen does consume a lot of power, yeah. so it makes sense. Those are the sacrifices they had to make to get this 270 watts. Yeah. No USB-C, there is Ethernet, there's an SD card no slot. No Thunderbolt. No Thunderbolt, but yeah. there is DisplayPort out. Right. So maybe not as forward looking in terms of ports. Yeah, I was I actually, like. if it had Thunderbolt, maybe they could do a GPU add-on at some point. Exactly. And nothing, yeah, yeah. it's kind of strange. But something definitely to be tested. I know you guys are getting one. Yep. I'm hopefully going to get one, so you can check out Avengers review on Engadget and my review on Tesla, but thank you so much for chatting with me about it. Thank you. And we'll see you guys later.